Hi, it's Luminsaris, and today in this video we're going to discuss validity and reliability of diagnosis, and this is a part of IB psychology, abnormal psychology. So um, just pause the video to look at the command term. So the introduction. What is diagnosis? Well, diagnosis in the realm of abnormal psychology is identifying an abnormal behavior on the basis of symptoms and other signs, such as self-reports, observations, clinical tests, or information from relatives. This provides a set of templates for clinicians to compare information about disorders to the patient's conditions. This also helps classify and standardize diagnoses. Some examples are the DSMIV or the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, its fourth edition in which there are a list of symptoms for 300 men mental disorders and the ICD, which references the cause of disorders. So what are some of the weakness of the classification systems? Well, first, it is um, a bit unethical. Um, second, it causes the effects of labeling. It may lead to stigmatization, prejudice, and discrimination, and self-labeling can lead to self-fulfilling self prophecy. So what is validity? Well, the val validity is the degree to which information is accurate. So if you guys have taken a group four class, like a science class in the IB program, you guys probably have learned this. But um, I found this target like diagram to be really really useful for me. Um, compare it with the next diagram in which I talk about reliability. So if we see it's the dots are mo mostly centered around the center of the target. So it shows how validity means it's more accurate. So results in correct treatment and prognosis and it is much difficult to be valid in a psychological disorder as it is not possible to observe objective signs. You know, physical disorders you can really see like, you know, um, if you have, I don't know, if you have like a tumor, you can really identify the tumor, right? But like psychological signs, like it's really hard to identify, so it's really subjective as well. Reliability, um, so if we look at the difference between the diagram in the validity, the, tar the target diagram in the validity and the reliability, we can really see a difference. This is the extent to which other diagnosticians are able to follow the method and be able to s diagnose the same disorder in another patient. So what I want to stress is that validity and reliability are independent of each other. Something can be valid and something can be reliable and something can be both, but um, yeah, they're not dependent of each other. So if we see it's centered towards like this specific area, which means other people are able to follow the same method and come up with the same results, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the results are accurate, okay? So let's look at a study that supports the idea that um, di diagnoses are not so much valid. So this is a really famous study done by Rosenhan in 1973. It's called On Being Sane in Insane Places. So the aim of this experiment was to challenge the reliability and val validity of diagnosis. This was a field experiment. So basically there were eight participants, five male and three female, who attempted to gain access to 12 different U.S. hospitals' psychiatric wards, and they phoned the hospitals to make a diagnostic appointment. And all the participants claimed that they were hearing voices at the um, phone call. And the se seven of the participants were diagnosed with schizophrenia, and one was diagnosed with manic depression. And once they entered the hospital, the participants stopped displaying pseudo symptoms and acted very much normal. And lastly, participants took notes on how they were treated. And the funny thing is that the hospital staff took notes saying that writing on their diary was one of their symptoms of their conditions, which is really funny. But uh, this showed that it took between 7 to 52 days for all the participants to be discharged. So they were here for a very, very long time. And you know, and they didn't even have the mental disorder, so they all disliked the environment and wished to be discharged, but of course they were forced to stay here for like 52 days, which is about two months, so that sucks. Less than two months, but... Um, and patients were left with their diagnoses, um, so schizophrenia and remission, and were therefore labeled as such. And this sucks because it leaves it gets left in your record for the rest of your life so it can really lead to a lot of stigma it can lead to like people not being able to get jobs because of the mental um, mental illness associated with a person so that sucks and they didn't even have the mental disorder so it 
It's really bad, but um, no staff suspected their sanity, but other patients did. So it's really funny how the person who is trying to diagnose them and like the nurses and stuff couldn't recognize like that they didn't have the mental disorder, but other patients were like, dude, you, you don't have the mental disorder. Are you trying to like be in a, an experiment or something? Like, what are you doing? So yeah, so it also looked at the insight into the living conditions of the psychiatric wards, which included poor hygiene and abusive wardens and little sp time spent with psychiatric doctors and, and medical records that were not kept confidential. So the conclusion of the experiment is that there is an enormous overlap in behaviors of the sane and the insane. And in a psychiatric ward, every day, behaviors are viewed under the labels given to the patient. So like it's like the priming effect confirmation bias. Like if you if you think that person has schizophrenia, you think of reasons as to why this person has schizophrenia, even though that person might not. So, um, but in the context of psychological wards, everyday human experiences are interpreted as pathological. An evaluation of this study was that this was very controversial as the participants were labeled after the release. As I said before, this could really lead to stigmatization and could affect their social and work life. And there was also deception involved and was very unethical. And this was a field experiment and a covert observation. So it does have high ecological validity and they led to many breakthroughs in the realm of psychology, especially abnormal. The second one really supports the idea of unreliability in the diagnoses. So Cooper et al. 1972 is also called the US-UK Diagnostic Pro Project. The aim of this experiment was to investigate reliability of diagnosis of depression and schizophrenia. The researchers asked American and British psychiatrists to diagnose patients by watching a number of videotaped clinical interviews. The British psychiatrists diagnosed the patients in the interview to be clinical depressed twice as often. So the findings showed that the American psychiatrist diagnosed the same patients to be suffering from schizophrenia twice as often. And in conclusion, the same cases did not result in similar diagnoses in the two countries. And this concludes that there are problems in, with reliability as well as the cultural differences in the interpretation of symptoms and therefore the diagnoses. So thank you guys so much for watching. So this really shows how even though the diagnostic manuals seek to be as unbiased and objective as possible is inevitable because these are not objective and visible symptoms that we can easily diagnose for physical disorders, right? So this is a mental disorder and it's really hard because we need to go through like interviews and questionnaires and you know, like there are so many factors that can affect the diagnosis of a person, but I guess like it happens most when like a condition is mild where you know the person is on the verge of getting a mental disorder but you're not really sure and those kind of things so it's really an important thing that we pay careful attention to the diagnostic manuals and what the doctors say and hopefully in the future the psychiatric words as we've seen in Rosenhan's experiment will not be as abusive will not be as inaccurate or have a lack of validity or reliability in the future but yeah, this shows a lot about abnormal psychology and I hope you guys like this video. Thank you guys so much and see you guys next time.